role model with brother Sheikh Abdul Ghani. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته the topic, as you've heard, is youth role model. And before I start, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about this ummah and said that this ummah will go through three different phases. This ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will go through three different stages. When he mentioned in his famous hadith, بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَأْ فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاء أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said that Al-Islam started as something strange and towards the end of time, it will go back to its state of being strange. فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاء So the glad tidings belongs to those ones who are strangers. And as we know, that Islam when it started, it was considered strange. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it the upper hand over its enemies. And Islam became dominant and took over the world. And then after that, the strangeness started vanishing slowly by slowly until Islam was no longer considered to be something strange. But then Rasulullah said, towards the end of time, which is this phase, Islam will go back to its state of being something strange. And you can see it with your own eyes. Why is it something strange? It is because the overwhelming majority of the people are against it. That is why Islam is considered strange. It has become so strange, just like the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that a time will come, a person who steadfastly remains upon his deen is like the one holding a piece of burning coal. How long can you hold it for? And of course, the ghuraba, the strangers of this deen, are very few in number. They are the fewest amongst the people. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one day, he heard somebody making a dua. A dua like he's never heard of before. And what was this person saying? Allahumma ij'alni min al-aqalleen. O oh Allah, make me amongst the few ones. فَقَالَ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ So Umar turned to this person and said, O oh slave of Allah, وَمَا الْأَقَلُّونَ Who are these few people? قَالَ This person said, سَمِعْتُ اللَّهَ يَقُولُ I heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلُ And none believed with him except a few. وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى And I also heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ And very few amongst my slaves are those ones who show gratefulness. فَقَالَ عُمَرُ When Umar had this explanation, he said, كُلُّ النَّاسِ أَفْقَهُ مِنْ عُمَرُ Everyone has more understanding than Umar. And of course, this is just 
you know, from his tawadu, from his humbleness, radiallahu anhu. Ghuraba are the fewest amongst the people, the strangers. But listen to what Imam Fudayl ibn Iyad says, advising the strangers of this time. He says, Ilzam tariq al huda wala yadurruka qillatu salikin. He says, follow the path of guidance. And don't be bothered by the fact that there are very few people walking on this path. And beware of the path of deviance and misguidance. And don't be deceived by the fact that the overwhelming majority of people walk on this path. That is why you will see, brothers and sisters in Islam, that this ummah can be manifested in one person. One person can be equal to this ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa. Verily, Ibrahim was an ummah, a nation by himself, obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala ibn Taymiyyah, ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says, the meaning of this verse, ay kana mu'minan wahdahu wa kana nasu kuffaran jami'an. That Ibrahim was the only believer and everybody else was a kafir. And Imam Bukhari reports in his Sahih that Ibrahim said to his wife Sarah, Ya Sarah, laysa ala wajhi al-ard mu'minun ghayri wa ghayruki. That there is no believer on the face of this earth except you and me. And one person, one of the greatest revivers of this deen, Abdul Wahab Azzam, was one of those strangers. One day his companion, his friend says to him, how comes you're strange? You're a stranger, you're different from the other people. Qala li sahibi. Immediately he answered by saying, Qala li sahibi, araka gharibaan bayna hadha al-anami duna khalili. My friend, my companion say to me that I see you as a stranger amongst the people with no friends. Qultu, and I answered him by saying, Kalla, by no means. Balil ana mugaribun. It is the people who are strangers. Ana fi alami. I am in my own world. Wahadi sabili. And this is my path. Brothers and sisters in Islam, that is why you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. He talks about a group of young people and He mentions them. And people will recite the Quran ila yawmul qiyamah. And whenever they recite the book of Allah, they will always come across the story of this group of young people. These are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about talking to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ نَبَأَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى That we narrate to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their story with the truth. They were young men who believed in their Lord and we increased them in guidance. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala says in his, in his tafsir that these were a group of young people who lived before the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they lived at a time when the ruler was a tyrant. The king who ruled upon the people was a tyrant ruler. And he says something very interesting, Imam Ibn Kathir. He says, فَذَكَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to them in the Quran that they were fitya. وَهُمُ الشَّبَابِ Meaning that they were young people. وَهُمْ أَقْبَلُ لِلْحَقِّ And he says the young people are more receptive to the truth. وَأَهْدَى لِسَّبِيلِ and more likely to accept the guidance. وَلِهَذَا That is why he says, كَانَ أَكْثَرُ الْمُسْتَجِيبِينَ لِلَّهِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ شَبَابًا That is why the majority of the people who answered to the call of Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم were young people, the youth. 
a summary of the story of these people. They came out one day with their people, and their people used to celebrate, they had a Eid. Once a year, when everybody will come out, men and women and children, and they would celebrate by prostrating before their statues and their adults, and worshipping them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would also slaughter for their idols, which is actually an act of shirk. And so they came out with their people, these young men. And when they saw what these people were doing, immediately they came to the realization that nobody deserves this except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one deserves sujood except Allah. No one deserves sacrifice except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So slowly by slowly they started pulling out of the crowds. The first one pulled out of the crowds and he went sat under a tree and the second one came and joined him and the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one until they became seven in number but the amazing thing as Imam Ibn Kathir says that none of them knew the other person no one of them they had no appointment to meet under the tree they just met under the tree and he says Imam Ibn Kathir innama jama'ahum hunak alladhi jama'a quloobahum ala al-eeman who gathered them under the tree? The one who united their hearts upon Iman is the one who brought them together under the tree. And what did they say? Listen to the words of Tawheed as they discussed amongst themselves. They said, These our people have taken for worship Aliha besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, had they not come with clear proofs to prove what they're doing is right. So what was the next step? And they discussed amongst themselves. And there was no way out except to go to a cave. And the young men turned to each other and they said, and when we, when we you withdraw from them, this was the only solution, to withdraw from their people because they couldn't change them. And when you withdraw from them, they said, and that which they worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then seek refuge in the cave. And your Lord will open a way for you from his mercy and will make easy for you your affair. You know, these young people, they were no ordinary people. Imam Ibn Kathir says, more than one amongst the Salaf, the pious predecessors, and the Mufassirun have commented that they came from wealthy families. They came from wealthy, well-to-do families. But look at them. They chose to, to go to a cave. Amazing thing is that the cave became more enjoyable for them to stay in than the palace. Why? It is because the palace was full of kufr. And the cave had Iman. And Iman made it the best place to be on this earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something we have to realize brothers and sisters in Islam, that the story of the people of the cave, the young people of the cave, just like any other story in the Quran, is not a bedtime story. It is not for the purpose of entertainment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the youth of this ummah. That those youth, those youth who came before you, those ones who loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved them. Those youth, they chose to abandon the luxury of the palace. They chose to abandon the way of their people, and they chose to go into the cave. Likewise, they chose to live a life of hardship, a tough life in the cave. So the message to the youth of this ummah is just like these people chose not to be pleased with the way of life of the kuffar. So likewise, the young people of this ummah should be displeased with the way of life of the kuffar. Even if it means 
that they go and live a life of hardship just like these people lived a life of hardship. Likewise, it is, in this story is a lesson for the youngsters, for the youth of this ummah, that aqeedah, tawheed, it has to be strong, it has to have immunity, it doesn't sway with people, it has to stand firm and strong in the face of kufr. Otherwise, if a person has aqeedah, which can be shaken, you know, it doesn't stand firm. This is not considered aqeedah. This person whose aqeedah is not strong will never ever taste the sweetness of iman. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ بِهِنَّ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ Three characteristics. If they are found in a person, this person will taste the sweetness of Iman. What are they, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا That this person should love Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anyone else. وَأَنْ يُحِبَّ الْمَرْأَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And that he should love a person for no other reason except for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنْ يَكْرَهْ أَنْ يَعُودَ إِلَى الْكُفْرِ كَمَا يَكْرَهْ أَنْ يُقْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ And that he should hate, he should dislike going back to the way of the kuffar much as he would hate and dislike being thrown into the hellfire. This much hatred. That you should fear going back to the way of kuffar as much as you would fear being thrown into hellfire, my brothers. You will find from the amazing, the amazing facts of this story is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a dog. A dog, it earns itself a place in the Quran to be mentioned ila yawm al qiyamah. That is why Shaykh Aid al Qarni he said, he says, that الكلب إذا صاحب الأخيار أصبح شريفا يذكر في القرآن والشريف إذا صاحب الأشرار أصبح كلبا. He says that a dog, because of accompanying pious people, it becomes noble enough to be mentioned in the Quran. And when a good person goes around with bad people, this person becomes like a dog. أصبح كلبا والعياذ بالله. Look at these people. When they went to the cave, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them in return? He says, وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ And we made their hearts strong and firm. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala filled their hearts with iman so that they could become steadfast, firm and patient, having abandoned the life of luxury having abandoned their family and their people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them steadfast and strong. فَقَالُوا What did they say? رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. لَنْ نَدْعُوَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَاهَا لَقَدْ قُلَّا إِذَا شَطَطَا We would have spoken the worst of error if we associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the youth have been known in the course of history as the people of tadhiyah, the people of sacrifice, meaning they will sacrifice the best thing that they possess, which is their life, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this young people of sacrifice, they are the ones who carry the concern of this deen in their hearts. They feel pain. When this ummah experiences pain and they lose sleep over the state of this ummah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives a very beautiful story. And this story is related by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that in the previous nations, those nations which came before this ummah, there was a king. And this king was a tyrant. And he had a magician for a chief advisor. The magician was the chief advisor to the king. So when the king, when the magician 
became old and he was about to die, he said to the king, I fear that I might die with this knowledge. So give me somebody, a young boy that I can pass this knowledge to. So the king started looking and finally he found a young boy that was very sharp in his thinking and very intelligent at the same time. And the boy went to the magician and he would go spend the whole day being taught magic, morning up until evening. Now on the way, the boy, as he was on his way to the magician, he comes across something that he's never seen before. He sees a tent and he goes to the tent and inside the tent is a monk. What is this monk doing? He looks inside and he sees this monk is worshipping. So he says to him, who is your Lord? What is this religion? And the monk explains to him that he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he tells him about the beauty of Tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the boy listened attentively and admired, you know, the da'wah that was given to him by this monk until he accepted Islam. So this is what the boy started doing. Every day on his way to the magician, he passes by the monk and he listens to him. And then he goes to the magician. On his way back home, he stops over at the monk and he listens to him and then he goes home. What is the message that he gets from the monk? That your Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he goes to the magician, the magician says to him that your Lord is the king. So, Rabbuk al-Malik, Rabbuk Allah. Now what happened is the boy used to sometimes get carried away and he would spend so much time with the monk. So by the time he gets to the magician, he's already late. So what would the magician do? He would beat him up. Likewise, when he goes back home, he stops over and he spends more time with the monk and he gets home late and he gets beaten up. So he get, you know, he can't bear it anymore. So he comes to the monk and he says that I get beaten up by the magician and my people. So what did the monk say to him? He said to him, when you go to the magician, say to him, Habasani ahli. My people kept me waiting. They, they held me back. And when you go back home late, say to your people, Habasani sahir. The magician held me. So this continued for a period of time. Until one day as the boy on, was on his way, home. Before he gets to the monk, he sees on the path that people walk, he sees an animal, a creature, so big that it has blocked the people from passing. So he says to himself, today I will know whose religion is the truth. So he says, Allahumma in kana amru rahib, ahabba ilayka min amri sahir, O Allah, if the religion of the monk is more beloved to you than the religion of the magician, then kill this animal. And he takes a stone and he throws it at the animal. And the animal drops dead. From there onwards, when he came to the monk that day and he told him of the story of what happened, the monk said to him, Ay Bunayya, my son, today you have become better than me. Your affair has reached what I can see. And you will surely be tested. If you are tested, then don't inform of me. So the boy left the monk and the words were ringing in his ears. You will be tested. And if you get tested, don't inform of me. The words kept on ringing in his ears. And he goes, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him additional powers. He can now cure the sick people. He can now cure the pe people who were born blind, people suffering from leprosy, diseases that are, are incurable. He could cure them all until somebody gets the information somebody hears of his powers one of the king's most trusted ministers 
one of the closest ministers to the king, hears. And this person had become blind. So when he hears, there is a young boy who can cure people who are blind, he takes as much wealth as he can with him. And so many gifts. And then he goes and places them before the boy. And he says to him, مَا هَهُنَا أَجْمَعَ لَكْ إِنْ أَنْتَ شَفَيْتَنِي That everything you see here is yours if you can cure me. So the boy says, إِنِّي لَا أُشْفِي أَحَدًا إِنَّمَا يَشْفِي اللَّهِ فَإِنْ شِئْتْ آمَنْتَ بِاللَّهِ وَدَعُوتُ لَكَ فشفاك. No one can cure except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you wish, believe in Allah. Then I will make a dua for you and Allah will cure your blindness. So this person believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And instantly Allah cured him of his blindness. So he went back to the king the next day and he sat where he sits every day. And the king couldn't stop noticing that the person could see. So he says to him, Man radda alayka basara? Who gave you back your sight? And he said, Rabbi, my Lord. And look at the foolishness of this king. He said, Anna, me? He said, no. Rabbi wa rabbuka Allah. My Lord and your Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the king gets angry and he says, Awalaka rabbun ghayri. Do you have a Lord besides me? And then he orders the minister to be tortured. And he was beaten up and tortured until the minister informed of the boy. And the soldiers were sent and they brought the boy to the king. And the king said to the boy, I can see that your magic has become so advanced that now you can cure the blind. And those ones who were born with leprosy and other diseases. And the boy says to him, that I cannot cure anyone, it is Allah who can cure. So the king says, Do you have a Lord besides me? And he orders the boy to be tortured. They had no mercy that he was just a young boy. And they tortured him continuously until he informed of the monk. No sooner had he mentioned the monk's name than the soldiers went and grabbed him from his tent and they brought him in front of their king, the head of Kufr. And the king said to him, no compromise. Abandon your religion. And he said, no. And the king ordered for a soul. You know, this one that they used to cut wood he says, bring it. And the soldiers grab him and they bring the soul and they put it in the middle of his head and they cut him into two pieces. And the boy can see this and the minister can see this. Then two pieces fall on opposite sides. Then they say, bring the minister now. Abandon your religion. And he says, no. And he stands firm like a mountain. And the soul is placed upon his head and he gets cut into two pieces. And the boy can see this. But of course, the boy is not about to be gotten rid of as easily as those two. Because the boy carried the knowledge of the magician. So the king didn't want to kill him. He wanted to make the journey, the path to death, as long as he could for, for, for the boy. So the king said to his soldiers, take him. إِلَىٰ جَبَلِ كَذَا وَكَذَا To such and such a mountain. فَإِنْ رَجَعَ عَنْ دِينِهِ وَإِلَّا فَطْرَحُوهُ If he abandons his religion, then fine. Otherwise, throw him from a high up above on the mountain. So they took him to the mountain. And they placed him right on top of the mountain. And they say to him, اِرْجِ عَنْ دِينِكْ But the boy turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he made a dua that shook up the heavens. He said, Allahumma kfinihim bima shikt. Oh Allah, save me from them in whichever way that you want. So Allah shook the mountain and they all died. Subhanallah, look at what happens. Does the boy say, I'm safe now. You know, let me run away from these people. He goes walking back to the king. What does this show you? What does this show you? He wants shahada. He wants to die for the sake of Allah. So he goes back walking to the king. And the king says to him, Ma fa'ala ashabuk? What happened to your companions? He said, Kafanihimullahu bimasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me from them. So the king orders another group of soldiers 
take him put him in a boat take him deep into the oceans if he accepts to abandon his religion or otherwise throw him into the ocean drown him so they take him and when they reach the middle of the ocean the boy makes a dua Allahumma kfinihim bima shi'at Oh Allah save me from them Instantly the boat capsizes and they drown And Allah saves the boy And he comes back walking to the king And the king says Ma fa'ala ashabuk What happened to your companions? Kafanihim Allah Allah saved me from them Then the boy goes on saying to the king Innaka lasta biqatili Hatta taf'al ma amuruka bih there is no way you will be able to kill me until you do as I tell you to do. And the king says, Wamahu, what is it? And the boy said, nas fi sa'idin wahid. Thumma sahman min kinanati wa taj'aluhu fi kabidil qawus wa taqulu bismillahi rabbil ghulam fa innaka in fa'alta thalika qataltani. He gives him suggestion on how to kill him. He says, bring all the people out so that they can witness and then take an arrow from where from the king's arrow no from the boy's quiver where he keeps his arrows and he says put the arrow in the middle of the bow and take aim and say bismillahi rabbil ghulam in the name of allah the lord of the boy so the people are all gathered together and the boy is tied to the stem of a tree and the king takes an arrow and he says Bismillahi, loud enough for everyone to hear. Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam. And he lets go of the arrow. And the arrow goes flying until it hits the boy here between his eye and his ear. And the boy reaches out to the arrow with his hand and he drops, his head drops, and he dies on the spot. And the king thinks, Khalas, I've gotten rid of this menace, this danger. And he goes back to the palace. As for the people, when they saw this, they all said with one voice, Amanna bi Rabbil Ghulam. We believe in the Lord of the Lord. So the king's helpers went back to the king Rashi. They said, Ara'ayta ma kunta tahdar? Do you see the thing that you feared most? Qad aman al nas. All the people have believed. And the king became angry. And he ordered that ditches should be dug on the sides of the roads. And he ordered for a fire to be lit. And he said, Anyone who doesn't abandon his religion goes into the fire. So the people came, men and women and children, and threw themselves into the fire. Until a woman came with a small infant baby. And when she came and she saw the fire, it is not an easy death. Wallahi, dying with fire is one of the most painful deaths. So she comes and she retreats. She becomes scared looking at her infant baby. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the baby speak. And what does the baby say? Ya ummahu isbiri fa innaki ala al haq. O mother, be patient, for you are upon the truth. And without any hesitation, she throws herself into the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates their story in Surah Al Buruj. Qutila ashab al ukhdud. النار ذات الوقود إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود وما نقموا منهم إلا أن يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد. This was the only crime. But Allah subhanahu wa taala did not intervene. If Allah wished, He could have saved them. But then Allah wishes to teach us another lesson. That do not think whenever the kufar kill Muslims. That the kuffar have achieved victory. No. The killing of Muslims is not defeat. It is shahada. It is victory. Shahada is victory. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Qul hal tarabbasuna bina illa ihda al husnayayn. Ihda al husnayayn. It is only one of those two things, those beautiful things that Allah has promised. It is either victory or shahada. Qul hal tarabbasuna bina. And true enough, Allah says, when He talked about where these people ended up, the believers, He says, 
وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ذلك الفوز الكبير That is the greatest success when they ended up in Jannah But as for the disbelievers But as for the disbelievers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إن الذين فتنوا المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثم لم يتوبوا فلهم عذاب جهنم ولهم عذاب الحريق That is their end that they ended up in hellfire. We have in this story so many things to learn. First, look at the Iman of this young boy. How much Iman did he have? Look at his Sidq Ma'Allah, his truthfulness with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Look at his Ikhlas, his sincerity. He chooses to die so that his people can be guided and believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. What a lesson for the youngsters of this Ummah that they should copy the example of this young boy. But unfortunately, if you look at the youngsters of this Ummah, who are their role models? The musicians, the basketball stars. You see them, they wear their names day and night. The parents, they buy them those, you know, those vests with the name, names of Kuffar, you know. So the boys and the children and the girls, they grow up getting attached to those Kuffar, you know. It is unfortunate that you will find the youngsters of this ummah, they know more about musicians, football stars, basketball stars, movie stars. They know each and everything about their lives. They know the cars which they drive. They know the name of their girlfriends. They know the, their latest affairs with women. They know what kind of khamr they drink. You would think those people were a'imma, imams. And truly they are imams. Did you know that? Did you know that 50 Cent was an imam? Al-Imam 50 Cent? Did you know that uh, uh, Pete, uh, Snoop Dogg was an Imam? Did you know that Destiny's child or sisters are a'imma, Imams? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, when he talks about this Imams, he says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَدْعُونَ إِلَى النَّارِ Allah said, we made them Imams, examples for people, but they lead to hellfire. So if the youngsters insist on following the examples of these people, then chances are that they could end up in hellfire. And they love them so much. In my country, Kenya, when Brazil won the World Cup, in Mombasa, one of the cities where the majority of the people are Muslims, and the people came out celebrating and dancing on the streets. Why? Because Brazil won the World Cup. And there's even a person who said, a day before the final was played, he said, tomorrow if Brazil wins, I am taking a promise to Allah that I will fast for three days. Fath al You know? And another one says, when Brazil has won the World Cup, he says, ah, oh, I wish when I go to Jannah, I see people like Ronaldo there. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Islam, you know, I've been told that my time is up. And this is only halfway through the talk. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us another chance, then we will complete this. Aqulu ma tasma'oon. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.